Um, so all of this material is going to be um, from my notebook here. Um, you can go down to my training GitHub account and in the plotting directory there's this notebook. Uh, this is going to be a basic overview of how to use PyPlot with Python. Um, just a few of the features you can use. Uh, definitely not going to be comprehensive. Uh, Matplotlib and PyPlot are pretty powerful tools. So I'm not going to cover everything, um, but enough to get you started. Um, I'm also not going to go much into um, the psychology, I guess, of how best to use plots. Um, that's a super interesting topic. Um, how best to communicate your idea using plots and graphics, um, but I don't know a, a lot about it, so I'm not going to go too much into it. Um, here's an example of a of a paper that goes a bit into that. Um, so to start off with, I'm just going to load some libraries and some test data. Um, so I've loaded PyPlot as PLT, that's what I generally do. It's fairly common to call PyPlot that. So if you see, see PLT in a uh, Python script you've downloaded, that's probably what it is. Um, since I'm using Jupyter, <laughs> USW, something's gone wrong with their system. Uh, since I'm using Jupyter, uh, I've got matplotlib inline turned on. Um, so what that's going to do is in my Jupyter notebook, when I do percent matplotlib inline, it's going to show the plots directly on um, the screen. So if we just want to plot some basic data using plt.plot, since I've run the matplotlib inline, it shows up directly on the screen. It was it was the source for this. Uh, if I don't, if you don't have Matplotlib, so if you're in a, your own script, um, to get the plots to show, they won't show up automatically because you can um, build things up, add multiple lines to a single plot. Um, you use the plot dot show command to say you're finished setting up the plots and that would um, create your display. Uh, so we could just as easily say plt.plot y, just to show two values. And you can see those are both showing up on the same axis automatically. Um, PyPlot's based on uh, uh, MATLAB's plotting interface. Um, so so it has the concept of a current axis. Uh, generally, any, dot, any PLT plotting functions will work on the current axis. So you can add a new um, line, so x, y, z, um, and they're all going to be on that current axis. Uh, later on, we'll get into multiple axes, multiple axes and switching between them. Um, you can see by default, um, that each of the lines is showing up as different colours. Um, so you do have that. There's a bunch of options for, for formatting the plots. So if I make my plot of X, so we can say X and Y, um, we'll, show, we'll show with X, Y coordinates. I mean, if you don't specify an X coordinate, it's just going to be the numbers one to one to, to however many um, points you have, um, which in this case is X. But it doesn't have to be. So we could do Y versus Z, where each of these is I've set as uh, sine X and cosine of three X. So it can wrap back on the ground on itself. It doesn't have to be monotonic or anything. Um, you, there's formatting options. Uh, we could say um, instead of doing a line, put points um, of various styles. We could have circles, we could have stars, we could have a dotted line. 
Um, so there's a bunch of op basic options there. Um, you can go into the um, documentation to see more options. So if I go here into the PyPlot documentation, uh, this goes into a bit about the different um, plotting options, things like that. And there are, if you go down, a whole bunch of different options on how to style your plots. Um, so what colours, what line types, dashes, so forth. Um, we can also do things like setting a title. And so forth. Uh, .x label. Again, these all know that you're wanting to add to the current plot. And since I'm using uh, pipe using uh, Jupyter with the matplotlib inline, it's just showing the current plot at the end of the cell. Um, I think it does support. Um, LaTeX, so if you're wanting to do fancy formatting with subscripts and stuff, so here I put subscript X, uh, so you can do a bit of formatting in there. Um, you can set limits, which is clip dot xlim maybe, 0 to 5. That's restricted the limits between 0 and 5, similarly for Y. Um, I believe you can also flip these round. Now it's going from 5 down to 0. That may not be especially useful on the X axis, but if you're wanting to do like a pressure plot where you've got high pressure down the bottom and low pressure up the top, um, flipping the axes in that way might be useful. Um, just to get the sort of layout you're wanting. Um, you can also set up the figure size. If you want a bigger plot, this is just the default figure size with plot.figure. Fig size equals 10 by 5. Um, so we can see we've made a much wider plot there. Um, using this fig size argument. Um, so that's sort of the basics. Oh, um, we can also, if I've got two plots, X and Z, and these are circles, and I want to add a, a legend onto this, what we can do is set a label on each plot. Sorry? Has got here. Yeah, where is the document exactly? Uh, this document? Yes, yeah, sorry, you, you arrived late, so you missed it. Um, so we're looking at um, github.com slash Scott Wales training, and then it's under the plotting um, directory. Um, so yeah, we were going on to adding a legend, so label equals, can we do alpha, label equals, again I'm just using latex syntax, um, just to be fancy, but you don't have to, you can just have normal text, um, plit.legend. Um, didn't like that. Let's not try and be fancy. There we go. So now it's put a legend um, at the bottom saying what each of these um, series represents. 
Um, so that's 1D um, plots, um, sort of linear plots. You can also do scatter plots. Um, I'm not going to go too much into that. Um, that would be if we make a new box. Let's so scatter x, y, z. And here it's using z as um, by default the size of the points. There are options for whether it's size or cover or so forth um, for doing a general scatter plot. Um, for climate data, um, you'll often be working with um, 2D data sets, so things like maps. Um, there are quite a number of different functions for working with 2D um, data sets. Um, there's IM show, which does regularly spaced data. Um, it's a fast um, function, so if you've got a really big data set, uh, it's probably best to start with IM show if you've got a regular grid. Um, it won't deal well with um, uh, scaling or curved grids and stuff like that. It, it just expects regular data. Um, P color mesh is more flexible. It can plot that irregularly spaced data. So if you have like a curved ocean grid or something, um, P color mesh would be the one to use. Um, and then there's two types of contour plots. Uh, basic contour will plot uh, just the contours, uh, while contour F will um, plot a filled contour plot. Um, so let's grab some news test data. And if I plot it, this is just the spherical harmonic. Um, so here I'm using P color mesh with my lon, lon and lat values as well as uh, my data. So equally well here you could do contour uh, to show a contour plot. Contour F will do a filled contour plot where you just have those levels. Um, so you can set a colour map. Um, so that equals Maybe I'm just going to have to look at what the color maps possibilities are. Um, so Matplot, uh, Pyplot has a list of colors, which I can just grab from this demo here. Um, it's often useful. Colors equals red. It's often useful to look at examples for plotting. Um, well, that's not useful. Um, so it's often useful to look at examples for plotting. Start out with something that you see and like the look of, and then work from there. Um, the <coughs> documentation here, if you go to the PyPlot documentation, has a whole bunch of examples of different plot types that you can just go into and see the code to generate some type of plot. So if you were feeling extra exceptionally extravagant and wanted something like this in your paper, um, you could go through um, the code here uh, to work out how to do that. Um, so we can set color limits using vmin and vmax. too far. So you can see there it's just showing the positive values. Uh, you can add a colour bar by saying clip.colour bar. We see there on the side we've got the, the colour bar. Um, so here for this example, I'm just running it through a function. If you're just plotting some function of x and y, um, it could be helpful to use NumPy's mesh grid function. 
So what that does here, so I'm converting my x and y, which are just linear series. So if I make a, we've just got a 1D array between 0 and 2 pi. Mesh grid converts that into a coordinate for each of the points in the array. So here x is a 1D array, but capital X is after running through that mesh grid function. And we've got a 2D array. So we could do p color mesh, big X, just to show it graphically. You can see here I've got a 2D array that varies um, with uh, longitude. Um, so I can feed those 2D arrays into some function of X and Y, which I have done here. And that gets us the, the function value at each of those X and Y points in our grid. Um, if you're just reading from a NetCDF file, of course, you don't have to do that because your data is already a grid. Um, just here, I mean, if I only put uh, small x and small y with the 1D arrays, um, that's only going to result in a 1D um, data set, which isn't really plottable for me. Um, so mesh grid is useful just for general functions. Um, so when you're working with climate data, now let's take a look at um, projections, so putting things onto a map. Uh, so far it's just been like x, y coordinates. Um, CardoPy is a really useful library for working with lots of different um, mapping projections. Um, so to, to make CardoPy work, we have to have a source projection which we tell CardoPy our data is on, and a target projection which we want it to be um, in our map. So we have to create a special axis using the axes function with a projection. So here, I'm, here I specify that I want a new axis where the projection is going to be a mole weight projection with a central longitude of 130 degrees. There's a whole big list of projections in the CardoPy documentation. If we go here, you can go in here and find all sorts of different projections and different arguments you can add to set up your maps as you wish. So here I've gone with a more way projection. And if I want to plot just my spherical harmonic, I have to say that this is a regular lap long grid in my input, which I just used with the plate Curie um, projection. So I've got a regular lap, lap long data set that I'm wanting to transform to a mole wave projection. So you have to keep in mind that you need the transform on both, or you need to transform on the source data set and projection on the um, target. If we run this, we can see that it's projected our data set using the mole wave projection. Um, Cardify also adds um, extra features to an axis. So if you if you save the axis, so you see I said axis the the axis with this projection, we could do things like add coastlines. So that's just dr drawing the coastlines onto the map for us. Um, it can do general um, like shapefile readings. So if you've got something from a GIS program that you're wanting to um, add to a plot, uh, I believe it can just uh, read that in, or it can also add background images um, if you're only plotting over a small area. Again, CardoPy has a gallery, so if you're looking at wanting to look at how to set up a, spe a specific type of map, uh, you can look here, and it's again got the code for how to do that. Um, so behind the scenes, CardoPy is using a library called Proj, which is like a generic. 
um, projection transform library written in C. Um, if you can't find the specific projection uh, that you want, you can use Proj to generate your own projections and feed those options into Carter Pi um, to set up your own custom projections. Um, well, that's fairly advanced. Uh, generally, you should be able to find everything you need um, in the existing projection list. Um, X-ray data sets have built-in uh, plotting support uh, for PyPlot. So if we load some data set, uh, this is air temperature from uh, HadGem2. So here I've got my 4D data set. Um, plotting a 4D data set is a bit hard to wrap your head around, so generally you want to reduce your, your data set to at least two dimensions. In, uh, PyPlot does have some 3D plotting functions. I'm not going to go into that today. Um, I'm just going to cover the, the 2D and 1D plot. So we can reduce the, the dimensions using X-ray's normal filtering um, functions. So just selecting a specific lap, long and vertical level. Uh, and just calling the dot plot function on that data set, it's going to create something useful for us. So it's read the NetCDF metadata, so it knows that the x-axis is time, knows that the y-axis is air temperature in Kelvin, and it's also said that we're at the, uh, what's that, 100,000 Pascal pressure, I assume, at this lat and long. Um, so that's all done for us automatically just by reading uh, the metadata that's in our data set. Um, so that's pretty cool. Um, if we instead just wanted to plot a 2D data set, say we wanted to plot the first time, time point instead of a single location, so we have a 2D data set here over lat and long, the whole plot. It's going to automatically for us create a 2D plot. Again, it's getting all of the metadata from that uh, NetCDF file. So 1D arrays get plot, 2D arrays get pink color mesh. Um, if we wanted to contour plot, uh, we have to say dot plot dot contour. And there we've got a contour plot. Um, you can see the lines are broken. That's because it was did have missing data. So if we went back to the peak color mesh plot, uh, the contour lines are automatically broken over the missing data points. It doesn't like extrapolate from one side to the other. Uh, you can turn off some of this automatic stuff if you didn't want it for your own personal uh, plots by saying, say, add color bar equals false. And then we've turned off the color bar. Uh, same for the labels. Again, you can go into the documentation, um, in this case using the X-ray documentation. And it gives you a whole bunch of different options for working with um, plots. So here we were looking at the add color bar stuff. Most of this is carried over directly from PyPlot. Um, it will also automatically for you uh, work out the best, um, work out a good rather color map to use. If you have a strictly positive values, like for instance, temperature in Kelvin, it's going to use this greenish color map. Uh, if you have diverging values, so between below zero to above zero, it's going to use a color map that varies from red to blue. Um, color maps is again a, a, a complex topic um, that's probably not, worth, not that I'm not going to cover here. Um, it's important to keep in mind when you're communicating results, things like quite a lot of the population is colorblind. Um, so 
there are specific colour maps designed for scientific data to make sure it's clear um, what's happening. Generally those like rainbow plots aren't very good because it makes it hard to discriminate between different values. Um, so yeah, we've got the colour map, we've added some options. Oops. So like I've said, uh, if you wanted to make something specific, something fancy, uh, go into the examples that are in the Matplotlib or Carterpy or Seaborn's another library that I've not gone into. Uh, this is mainly for like statistical stuff, so you've got lots of box plots and stuff like that, so that's another good source of examples um, that we have installed in our Anaconda environment. So look at examples um, and then adapt those examples to your own uh, data sets. Um, some other stuff, if you're wanting to save to a file, uh, use this plot.savefig function. Um, it's going to work out the correct uh, file type based on the extension here. So this would create a PNG file of Melbourne temperatures. So it's shown it and it should also, uh, I might be able to, it's probably gone into my home directory or something. Uh, Mel temp. No, it's going to be somewhere. Um, so if I want tilde slash mel temp, I didn't like that. Okay. Oh, yeah, um, Python doesn't um, understand tilde, so I should would have to do my home directory directly. Um, but yeah, that's how you, you save a file. Do .jpg as well. Um, if you wanted to create multiple plots on the same axis, um, we do this. Uh, so we say plot.subplots. So this will create a two by one array of plots. Um, and it returns the figure and the axes. Uh, figure we're not going to worry about. That's basically the, the containing element in PyPlot. But axes is what we actually draw to. So um, we could, this returns an array. Since I've just got a 1D array, a two by one value, I just index by axes zero and axes one. And, and if we just run this, here we've got two rows. The first one is the P color mesh. And the second is the contour. Uh, you could just as easily have a two by two array. You just then have to um, index it using two dimensions. So you can lay out your values like this. Um, so here we've got a partial values. If I go back to the single, single um, column, You can see my x values goes from 0 to 360 in one plot and 0 to 180 in another. If I want these to have the same axis here, I can say uh, share x equals true. And now they're both using that same um, x axis in this case up to, what would that be? 380 something, so it's extended it a bit. Um, but you could use that um, set x limit to bring it back down to 360 degrees. And then we have everything on the same um, x-axis. Uh, you can do the same thing for y-axis as well. So if you wanted to have two adjacent plots on the same y-axis, uh, you just do share y equals true. Um, if you'd like to hatch an area, so to show confidence or something, uh, this is a bit more complex. Um, to hatch an area, we need to go back down to the lower level function p color, which works just like p color mesh for most purposes. 
um, it, except it doesn't support 1D arrays for high latitude and longitude values. We have to use 2D arrays, just like we did for uh, with the mesh grid for generating the function values. So here I've got my air temperature at uh, level zero times zero, and I'm saying significant is in this case just wherever it's greater than 300. And I can plot my air temperature, just like we saw before. And now I want to show uh, confidence by hatching some area. So I'm just going to hatch the, the area here, which I've selected using the where function. If you've got some other mask from some other source, that would work just as well. So I have to use the NumPy mesh grid function uh, to convert my one-dimensional longitude and latitude arrays to two-dimensional arrays, which I'm calling big X and big Y. And then I can call this um, plot.pColor. So I'm plotting big X, big Y, and significant. I'm saying use dots for hatches. So hatch equals dot. There are a couple of different styles of hatching. But if we just plot that, you can see it's added hatching over that area. We could also say use slashes. It's going to add slashes. I have a question here. Is yeah. the, that significant mask, does it only contain ones and zeros? Um, I'm using it as a NumPy mask array. So it's not ones and zeros, it's, uh, if I go down here, values. So it's going to be not a number where it's masked out and valid values where it isn't. Um, let's actually show you what happens. So I've got this alpha thing which I'm about to explain. We'll just do this first. Um, so it actually looks like this when I've done that cutout. So if I do plot.pColor without that alpha value, it's going to show the actual values. So it's not a number every layer outside of here uh, because I've used uh, the where function to mask out values where it's uh, below 300 Kelvin. Um, so we've still got values in here. Um, I mean, you could just as easily use a ones and zeros masked array. Uh, you just have to do the where uh, the mask equals one, for instance. Uh, so for my purposes, I don't want to actually show the, the colouring where I've got my significant area. I just want to keep the hatching. The colouring is going to come from my contour plot. So in that case, I can say alpha. Alpha is basically opacity. Um, so if you're wanting to layer on multiple um, plots onto the same axes, um, you can use the alpha value to control opacity there. So that's 0% opacity, 50% uh, opacity. So you can see it, it's fainter. Um, there's a bit of artifacting there from the way it does the plotting. Uh, but we can see if we lay them on top of each other, you can still kind of see the yellow underneath. Um, it becomes more obvious at lower opacities you can see through the first plot. So if you're layering lots of things over each other, that can be helpful. If we just want to keep the hatching, you just set the opacity for, for the actual P color mesh to zero. Um, yeah, so that was my basic overview of um, plotting in uh, 1D and 2D data sets. Um, does anyone have any questions they'd like to go over? Uh, like I said, there's a big list of examples in the in the matplotlib and the CardoPy documentation. There's a whole range of options for how you want to customize your plots. Um, and it, I mean, the, the easiest way is just to find something you like the look of, and then see if you can replicate that.
Okay. Well, if there's uh, I, I've got a question. Yeah, sure. Uh, is there a coastline data set that um, would overlay the coastlines just as lines in case there's no continents in the, like in this case you have the continents in the data set, right? Yeah. And in case you have um, no continents in the data set, is there like a thing you can overlay um, coastlines? Uh, so like I said, the Cartopi stuff will do that for you. So you don't have to use the weird projections, you can just go from a regular lat long grid uh, to a regular lat long grid and then you still get those coastline features. Um, okay. Like that. Yeah, thank you. Just as easily copy that, go back down to my hatching plot. Add this, I'd have to add transform equals CCRS dot plate career because I, my input data sets is on the lat long grid. And I have to add that to the hatching as well. And we've got that, and we could do axe dot coastlines. Like that. Uh, you can see you do have to fiddle about with the figure size and stuff to get um, things working well. Um, that actually brings up a good point. You can see here um, over the prime meridian we've got a array of a line of white. Um, that is because it's gone up to the edge of the plot. Uh, the, the latitudes go from 0 to well, 359 or so, 359 degrees. So we've got a gap between 359 and 0 degrees. Um, so you, there's, you can work around that um, by repeating the last line of your data set. It's one way to do that, or we should be able to um, add an extra point to our longitude at um, 360 degrees. So if we say three sixty no. But basically the idea is you can you can extend the add an extra value to your longitude and latitude values. Um, or you can just repeat the the um, first uh, first first line um, at the end of your data set as well. Um, there's a function to do that in CartaPy, I believe, um, like a wrap axis function in CartaPy, which will do that for you, copying the the first um, column to the to the end of your data set as well, so it wraps around. Okay, if there's no other questions, thanks all for coming. I hope this was useful for you. Um, I'll put up this filled in um, notebook again in that same directory up the top. So that's Scott Wales slash training. Oh, yes, sorry. sorry. Uh, how we can, uh, you know, the color bar in your last picture is wider than, you know, the width of our main picture. How we can scale it, you know? Make it oh, more yeah. more um, so it fits into um, the, the figure size that it has. Um, so yeah. since we're using a specific projection, um, that has a specific aspect ratio. So we can change um, the figure size. So we can say uh, plot dot figure fig size equals ten by five. So make it a bit wider. And you can see then that that's 
keeping the same aspect ratio in our projection, um, but it's filling it up a bit better with the colour bar and making that a bit more even. Um, to get them to exactly match up, you'd have to experiment a bit with different colour sizes to see what's most pleasing to the eye. You can also specify the width and height of the color bar separately. Absolutely. In a different box. But I don't know how to do it by heart. So. Yeah, so you'd have, you can go into the documentation for that, those color bar stuff as well um, to work out specific ratios. There are a lot, lots of options to all of these functions that I don't know about. Um, so yeah, the documentation is really good to take a look into if you can't work out how to do something. One of the issues you have there is that the colour bar is made by, um, isn't it made by um, X-Array? Yeah, sure. So yeah. if you don't want the X-Ray function and you want your own colour bar, you just say add colour bar equals false, clip.colour bar We'll add your own. Um, okay, so it didn't like that. So, uh, if you had come up with something like no mappable was found to use for color bar, that means um, the color bar can't work out which plot it, it's creating a color bar for. Um, so I've turned off the color bar for the contour F the automatic colour bar, and I want to add one. So I save that plot. So I just say, save it to a variable. Here I'm just calling it contour. And I feed that plot into um, the colour bar plot. So now I've created my own colour bar plot, not using the default one. And I can add my own options um, here. I just have to save that plot to create a a colour bar for it, it couldn't work it out automatically for me. That's cool, thanks. That's one of the um, things that people quite often have issues with. I mean, X-Array is so good at producing a default plot, but then when they want mm. to change something, it can, but that's that's a good, probably a really good um, general method. Just turn off what the bit that X-Array is adding and do it yourself, rather than trying to sort of add, trying to add uh, options to the X-Array plot. Absolutely, yeah. Cool, thanks. I mean, effectively, you can just call pyplot.contourf uh, using the latitude and longitude values from um, the air temperature as well, and just do it manually without the x ray um, bits. Or just do the contour plot, turn things off, and add things back as desired. Cool, anything else? Oh, um, I remember trying to muck about with the title that X-Array gave it too and had some issues um, with that. Yeah, okay, I, don't know. <laughs> I, might, I think, I, yeah, okay, it's fine, that's good then. Yeah, um, you can turn off the X and Y labels like in a 2D plot. Um, here we've not got any because of that projection. Um, but if you want to change the title, just overwrite it with um, plt.title. And that will set, set your title to whatever you want. Okay. Well, thanks everyone for coming. Hope you learned something useful. Again, the, this um, notebook is going to be put up to that um, training repository. Um, so thanks. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Scott. What's next with Jim? Um, I don't remember. Check your emails for what next week's going to cover. Should, should okay. Yeah, we'll we'll set something around. <laughs> there's a there's a topic planned, but. Uh, <laughs> I think it might not be something to just data. Okay, see ya. Okay. Yeah. Yeah.